This is Southern Cross News with Joe Palmer. Good evening everyone and welcome to Southern Cross News. A young woman is lucky to be alive after narrowly escaping a deliberately lit blaze which tore through a Claremont property overnight. Authorities say the incident was a targeted attack towards the home's residents. The offenders are still on the run tonight. A dramatic scene confronting neighbours of this Claremont property. We just came outside and we realised, oh my God, it's a fire. Fire tearing through this unit just after nine o'clock. They've picked a paver up off the ground here and thrown it through the window and then poured petrol inside and lit the place on fire. Those nearby raising the alarm with emergency services arriving within minutes to find it fully engulfed in flames and totally destroyed. The fire came out all the windows and doors. One of the tenants, an 18-year-old woman, was inside at the time. It's understood she managed to flee to the back room, then jumping two storeys down, landing in the arms of her partner, who had just returned home. She received cuts to her legs from the broken glass and was treated in hospital. It could have been um, much more serious if that person um, was unable to get out. Forensic spending the morning combing the scene for evidence. They're now searching for two males, one in particular who they say was tall, stocky and wearing dark clothing, urging the public to come forward with any information. That it appears at this stage to be a targeted attack upon that residence. Um, and we're following a number of lines of inquiry at the moment uh, to ascertain uh, why it's occurred. Witnesses shocked this could happen in the normally quiet area. There's lots of young families and yeah, no, it's a very, very lovely area to live in. Authorities remained on the scene here at Aldridge Court overnight to ensure there was no further damage to surrounding properties. Yeah, it's very scary there for quite a while. The total damage bill estimated at more than $200,000, leaving a landlord with a headache and tenants without a home. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. One of Tasmania's oldest buildings has failed to secure a spot on the National Heritage List. Willow Court at New Norfolk first opened in 1827 and ran for 170 years, but it wasn't enough to impress the judges. This site has housed hundreds of patients, Willow Court, an infamous part of New Norfolk's history. The hospital and asylum opened in 1827 and closed in 2000. Despite its old age, it's been rejected from the National Heritage List. It's heart-wrenching and gut-wrenching to find that, no, we were unsuccessful. The council launched the bid in 2015, but the Australian Heritage Council has since found Willow Court was not unique. And while the site does show a history of mental health treatment in Australia, it was not represented to an outstanding standard. When it ceased being uh, an institution, there were some people that said, right, just doze the lot, let's move on. And then others said, let's celebrate what we have here. I think it's really sad that it hasn't been put on national heritage because there's just so much history here and I really can't understand what the decision's about. I, I, I don't know what more the site would need to do to prove itself. The decision left the mayor devastated and questioning the site's future, but vowing to fight the decision. To factor in a million dollars worth of works is a lot of, lot of rate increases. Will the whole community jump on board and buy in with that? That's the question to ask. Willow Court does have a dark past and there are many horror stories of how patients were treated behind these walls. But the Mayor says it is an important part of New Norfolk's history and does need to be recognised. New Norfolk and its uh, historical precinct has a fantastic potential and we want it to achieve that potential and we'll work with the council and the community to help achieve that potential. Michelle Wisby, Southern Cross News. The state government is looking beyond its plans for a second electricity connection with the mainland, revealing ambitions for construction of a third Bass Strait cable. The interconnectors are part of a push to make Tasmania the battery of the nation. But a key report is questioning the cost and viability of the project. Australia's energy network is facing unprecedented change. With the expected retirement of major coal-fired power stations, the National Energy Market Operator has released a report on how to fill this gap, highlighting the need for renewable energy and energy storage. 
We have it in Tasmania. We have what the rest of the nation is really after and is seeking. And it's confirmed in this report that's released today. Hydro is pitching to fill the gap with the development of 14 possible pumped hydro projects. They'd be able to pump water up into a dam to be used for electricity generation in peak times. But another cable, the Marinus Link, would be needed to export more energy across Bass Strait. It's, it's a little chicken and the egg in terms of they go together. You, you don't have one without the other. Um, so clearly the important part of, of where we're at now is the work TAS networks are doing with further interconnection. But today's report leaves questions over the viability of the proposed Marinus Link with the market operator's least cost development plan excluding a new cable and suggesting energy storage on the mainland. A pumped hydro uh, costs of production are 20% less than equivalent cost of production on the mainland. This puts us in a sweet spot. But with major change across the national electricity market, the state government is looking long term, revealing today its ambitions for not only a second Bass Strait cable, but a third as well. We have one cable now, Bass Link, and further interconnection will deliver uh, benefits. So uh, we're talking about further opportunity going forward. But that project would be a long way down the line. Michael Breen, Southern Cross News. Tasmania is poised to seize more lucrative defence deals as local companies snap up big dollar contracts. Defence Industries Minister Christopher Pine was the latest ministerial fly-in to the Braddon campaign today, talking up plans for sonar testing and patrol boat contracts. But Labor says it's all promises Tasmanians have heard before. It's clear the government is throwing every minister it has at the Braddon front line. With Matt Canavan on Wednesday, Julie Bishop on Friday, Peter Dutton yesterday, and now Christopher Pine. With so many politicians in the northwest, you'd swear Canberra was moving over. Well, if we win in Braddon, uh, it would be an extraordinary uh, turn of events because a government hasn't beaten the opposition uh, in a hundred years in a by election. The minister today toured a Devonport engineering firm, which will be supplying the Australian Submarine Corporation for the next 40 years. It was only about two years ago that they gave us the opportunity to sign a contract for the next 40 years as far as refurbishment of all the cylinders and hydraulic components for the submarines. So you know, it's, it's a good contract to have. The last 12 months has seen a sea change in defence industry in Tasmania. Hobart company Taylor Brothers Marine has also secured a major contract fitting out accommodation spaces on 12 of Australia's new offshore patrol vessels. While defence giant Talus Australia is also talking to the Australian Maritime College to establish a naval sonar test facility in the state, with Tasmania's deep cold lakes making for ideal conditions. But the opposition has questioned past promises by Liberal candidate Brett Whiteley. The last time in the 2016 election he stood here in Braddon next to a shiny new tank um, and uh, talked about creating new um, jobs. That was uh, two and a half years ago now. We've seen nothing come of that. Braddon voters can expect more Canberra visitors with 11 days still to go. Sean McComish, Southern Cross News. Tasmanian beekeepers say they're fed up as they continue to push back against New Zealand's bid to trademark the word manuka. The fight has been escalating for a few years, with some now claiming it puts current and future exports at stake. Waging war over one of the state's sweeter assets. Tasmanian honey producers left with a sour taste in their mouths as New Zealand's push to trademark a certain type of honey continues. Disappointingly, they're trying to tell the world that manuka only comes from New Zealand when they know that is incorrect. After years of fighting, Tasmanian beekeepers say they're fed up. Well, it would have a, a negative, uh, serious negative impact on our business or our ability to market our uh, Manuka honey. They're only a small little country, but they're really bullying us. Demand for the product is on the rise, particularly overseas, with many believing it's good for gut health. Those in the industry say the prospect of a trademark wouldn't just affect the state's current exports. There's still much more growth potential here in, in Australia, in Tasmania, uh, for production of this honey. So there's a 
there's a, there's a bright future out there for our industry. Australia has over 80 subspecies of the Manuka flower, with eight of those in Tasmania. New Zealand is only home to one. If successful, Australia would have to take another approach to marketing. We'll have to dream up some other name for the same plant. For now, they say they'll keep fighting. No, no, we'll, we'll keep going until, uh, uh, <laughs> till there's a conclusion. Judy Augustine, Southern Cross News. Tributes are flowing for a 16-year-old girl who tragically died from meningococcal in Hobart last week. Sarah Belts was struck down with the insidious disease last Monday and died on Thursday, leaving her family and friends shocked and devastated. She's being remembered as a much-loved family member and friend and respected member of the equestrian community. Her funeral will be held in South Hobart this Friday. The government is preparing to hand over the keys to 81 new affordable properties in a bid to ease Tasmania's unprecedented housing shortage. This unit at Berrydale, purpose built for someone in a wheelchair and ready for a new tenant to move in next week. But Labor has raised concerns the government is not keeping pace with its own ambitious affordable housing strategy as our housing crisis continues. The government's goal is to build 430 houses this financial year alone. There is still a strong demand uh, for um, social and affordable housing in Tasmania. Uh, certainly the, the, the supply we're putting on the ground certainly now and over the next 12 months we think will help uh, meet some of that demand. Earlier this year there were 3,400 applications waiting on Tasmania's housing register. Hobart's Elwick Racecourse is set to be revamped after a proposal to upgrade the thoroughbred track was selected. Engineers are now working on designs for the 28 metre wide course with hopes it will be ready for the 2020 Hobart Cup. The venue will also be upgraded with construction expected to begin in March next year. With more wild weather predicted over the next few days, Tasmanians are being urged to prepare. A severe weather warning has been issued with wind speeds expected to reach up to 110 kilometres an hour. Minor flooding is likely in some areas, with rainfall predicted to exceed 100 millimetres. The Bureau of Meteorology says conditions should ease on Thursday morning. Mona Foma's move to Launceston looks to have paid off, with the festival securing a prestigious award. Gautier's performance at the Albert Hall was one of the headline events in January. Last night it was recognised at the Helpman Awards as the best Australian contemporary concert. It's Mona Foma's second Helpman win in as many years. Now let's take a look at the day's business and finance news with thanks to TASPLAN, your local super fund. Australian shares have closed lower with a sharp decline in global oil prices sending energy stocks down and weak commodity prices putting pressure on the broader market. The ASX 200 index fell 37.9 points. A short time ago the Australian dollar was trading at 74.31 US cents and 63.34 Euro cents. And Tasmanian Richie Port has spoken for the first time after abandoning the Tour de France. The 33-year-old was just 10 kilometres into Stage 9 when a collision left him with a broken collarbone. Port has described the moment his hopes were dashed as he hit the ground. To be honest, I don't remember anything other than just being on the ground. And as a cyclist knows, um, the, the feeling of breaking your collarbone, you, you know what that's like. And Doctors say Port should be back in training for in three to four weeks. Good evening. It took a little while, but the weather gradually turned today as the front loomed large. Hobart and Friendly Beach is our top temperature with 18. Launceston 15, Burnie and Devonport 14 degrees. Flinders Island, Grove and Ooze 17. Strawn 16, King Island and St Helens 15. Lowhead 14. Mount Reed had 50 millimetres of rain to 9am, while today Strawn and Liawini had 10 before 3pm. But of course those totals are building. The east and southeast had the clearer skies for a while at least, with low level convective clouds 
cloud starting its trek across from the west today. The front has plenty of cloud with embedded thunderstorms over our region and to the north. Cold air sits behind the front with a low whipping up more cloud over waters south of Perth. A little more cloud extends from far north Queensland westwards. Tomorrow a second front heads our way stretching back to WA from a low to our southwest. A ridge of high pressure over most of the mainland with troughs over western Queensland and central parts. Winds tending northwestly tomorrow morning and increasing later to 30 to 40 knots swells up to 7 metres. So that severe weather warning continues. It's happening for the western, northern and uh, other parts of eastern Tasmania. A gale warning for all coastal waters apart from a strong wind warning over the lower east. A small craft wind alert for the lakes. A minor flood warning for the Meander along with a flood watch for the Derwent, Huon along with all northern rivers. A warning to sheep graziers for most grazing districts as well. Tomorrow, showery and windy. 15 for Hobart, 13 for Jeeveston, 12 the top for Bothwell. Showers mainly later over the south and southeast. Showers over Launceston, 13 the high, 13 also for Devonport, very windy, and 12 the top for Cressy. For Burnie tomorrow, showers very windy, 13 the top, 13 for Strawn, Curry some showers as well, plenty of wind and 14, 14 also for St Helens, Swansea a shower or two becoming windy and 15 and 14 for Orford. On Thursday, possible heavy showers over the north and west along with a thunderstorm in the west, snow to 600 metres, partly cloudy over the central north and east on Friday, showers over the west, south and Bass Strait, more showers over the west and far south on Saturday, fine for the rest of Tasmania and more snow on the hilltops. A shower for Perth tomorrow. Mostly sunny weather for Adelaide, Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane. A light frost to start the day for Canberra and Alice Springs. And cloudy around the state as we have a little respite from the rain. 9 degrees in Hobart, 9 in Launceston, a bit showery in Devonport at the moment and 9 degrees as well. That's it from me, Joe, on World Emoji Day. Smiling face with hard eyes. <laughs> I love it. Thank you very much. That's all from the team for now. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.